intuitive viewers. Long time no see. <laughs> um, I, I just wanted to um, do a quick kind of a political read for you. And also, I just wanted to start by thanking everybody for their, um, their I mean, overwhelming kind words, wishes, condolences, love um, for the passing of my mom. Uh, I, I really appreciate it and I uh, can't tell you how much it, it it does ease the pain when you have such an outpouring of just kindness and love and and it it um yeah I just want to thank everybody so much and I'm very very happy to be here with you today um and talk about some some politics with you um it doesn't just because I stopped coming on for a little while doesn't mean I stopped getting messages. I get them constantly. So I wanted to share some with you. Um, the first, I wanted to get into Liz Cheney and Donald and kind of that where that's going. But I wanted to start with just get something out of the way with Weisselberg. Um, so it's this weird thing in the media or I don't know where, where this is coming from, but it's 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 in the media that he has somehow um, is going to testify about his role in the Trump organization, but he's not going against Donald Trump and he's not going against the family. And I just want to let you know, uh, he's flipped. He has completely flipped. He is going to throw the family under the bus. He's going to, for entertainment purposes only, by the way. Uh, this is just what I get, you know, from my guys. This, I'm a crazy person. Um, <laughs> but he is going to be throwing the family under the bus. He is going to be um, giving up all the goods, everything he was asked to do, everything about Donald, everything about the kids. He is going to give it all up. Um, so he is going against the family and he and I feel like what well and you can you can actually see this I mean one of my um things that you know every every psychic or medium or uh, intuitive or empath or they kind of have their 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 thing that's kind of their niche or their thing and one of mine is being able to kind of head tap or um, go into people's energy, mind, whatever you want to say, and find, understand their motivations, understand what is going on with them, what they're thinking, how they're feeling. It's just one of my things that I do. So with Weisselberg, if you look at his attorneys, um, when he walked into the courtroom this last time and basically pled guilty you can see it just in his posture. So take take any kind of intuitiveness or anything. Else. If you just look at it on its face, if just in his posture and the way he walked in, um, you saw a defeated man, someone defeated, right? Someone who has succumbed to the system. <laughs> um, and the way his team was treating him was such gentleness. And such, um, you know, pats on the backs and little hugs and, you know, realizing that he was put into a corner that nobody could get him out of. He was just, they had him, they had him. So he basically has had to plead guilty. He's had to flip. He's going to give up everything. He's not going to plead the fifth. Um, he's going to say everything he has to about the family. And part of it, there's a couple things that came up for me. One is that, you know, he's an old, older man that does not want to spend any time wasted in jail, right? So he, so there's that, that he's, this is what I'm just saying, this is as for, as a intuitive, this is what I'm picking up on. So I, I'm an older man. I don't want to waste any time in jail. I don't have a lot of time. The other thing I picked up on was a chronic, some kind of chronic um, health thing that he deals with. Um, so it's either, and to me, that means uh, something that can be exacerbated by stress. Um, and so this is to me like high blood pressure or a, a heart issue or 
something where if he's put under a ton of stress for for years, you know, like in prison, it would probably do him in. So there's that as well. So I feel like he was just in in every way he was in a corner where he just he had to give up basically. So I don't know why it's coming across this. Well, I I do I I feel like I do understand why. Um, is that uh, and and this is kind of how my guides put it to me was that what they're trying to do with this media thing of of well I'm not going to go against Trump I'm just going against you know. <laughs> the organization or whatever, I just my part in it or whatever. They're trying to buy time basically for him to um, basically do his thing. And I feel like this, this, this section of it is going to move really quickly. Um, but basically buy him some time so that he can do what he has to do and get into and go to jail and kind of uh, this time in jail will be kind of time that he can just be like, um, kind of wait out this the uh the hit he's going to take from trump when he figures it out or when somebody tells him no he is flipped completely he is going after you um he's throwing you under the bus um so and and when you know and when trump finds it out it'll be oh well he was horrible he was a terrible tax guy he told me all the wrong things that he'll be you know same same thing that that trump always does to everybody who's who's loyal until they're until they they can't be or until they aren't um he'll become the coffee boy that that worked for him for you know 60 years whatever he's worked for before <laughs> um so that's what's happening with weisselberg he is he what i don't know like i said i don't know all the reasons why the media is portraying it this way but he has flipped completely that's that. Um, and I do feel like it will end up being that um, kind of like their charities where it's going to be like, uh, not only do you have to like pay money back, but you also have to, you can't work here anymore. You can't be in the state anymore doing these kinds of things anymore. So you need to move on to another state or go somewhere else because this is not happening here. Your organization is costing us more money than you, you bring in, so you're out. <laughs> so that's, it's kind of gonna be like that. Um, okay, so let's move on to Liz and Donald. Um, and we saw a two or three weeks ago that she was gonna lose her primary. So if you watch this channel and, and other ones too, I think we're saying the same thing, but um, you know that she was gonna lose. However, she's not really playing, I feel like it was no surprise to her at all. I feel like she knew, she knew what she's giving up and she made the decision to do it. It's like, that's okay, I'm gonna play the long game. And I feel like the Cheneys have been around long enough that um, they know that things come and go, that, uh, that Trump will be gone one day, that Trumpism will be gone one day. Um, and it may, be a, it may be a slow, you know, roll out um, because, you know, he's relentless. He's just kind of one of those people that just won't give up, even though he's completely wrong and he's going down, but he won't give up. So that that's okay. He may hold on a little bit longer. It's all right. Um, but he's going, you know, he's going, his career and his everything is going one direction, right? Um, but she's been around and her family's been around long enough that they know these things come and go. And even if they're horrible, they come and go. So I feel like they know eventually he will be gone and then her time will come to say, um, I saw the writing on the wall. You know, I was in the this on the side of right. I was on the side of the truth. Um, and and I feel like it, it's interesting because I I I don't know that I feel like um, and I'm scribbling down here. If you wonder what I'm doing, because I'm getting I'm getting messages as we speak, but um I don't know if I feel like she may run for president at some point. I keep getting vice. So I think she may be picked as someone's VP at some point. Um, maybe it'll be a few years down the line. Maybe it won't be, you know, this time around. But I kind of feel like her her time is coming. And um, what she's doing now is, is she's kind of playing the long game. When Trump goes away, um, that's when her star will kind of rise. And it will be a matter of time before I'm angry at Liz Cheney for doing stupid things again. <laughs> you know, right now it's kind of we're we're in the same camp of just get rid of this guy. He's bad news for for 
uh, the country as a whole. And he's kind of a poison that needs to be, it's like the house is on fire. We need to, to put the fire out before we rearrange the furniture. So <laughs> that is what's happening. Um, and then we can argue about the furniture again, you know, or the house or whatever. We can, we can argue about that later, but this time, but the fire needs to be put out. So she's helping to put out the fire. And I feel like she's, that's what she's doing. So in the end, in the Liz versus Donald uh, game, she will, she will be the victor for sure. Um, in the short term, there may be points where it looks like she's not winning. Oh, she made the wrong decision or things like that, because it will seem like she's getting buried by her own party. But they're in such um when, my guy used the words um they use the word uh disoriented they're disoriented right now they don't the republican party doesn't really know they're in such the in such an upside down world they created such an upside down world for themselves right now it really is just get through the day because they don't know where they're going. They don't, they don't have really any long-term plans anymore. Um, and I agree with, there are pundits saying, you know, with, with the Roe v. Wade and things like that, that, you know, they really could have used Roe v. Wade in this next election cycle to, to sink their teeth into, but they've not only, I used, I heard the analogy of the dog is caught car, right? They don't have that anymore as, as an issue at all. And it's flipped. People are very upset about the fact that there's no, um, you know, that, that, that rape and incest aren't, aren't a um, consideration anymore that, you know, there's a lot, it's like in a, in a really topsy turvy way um, that they've put th themselves in this box with this weird position um, with Roe v. Wade being so extreme. So, and so, you know, for a long time now, um, my guides have been saying they're going to lose the House and Senate. They're not going to keep it. They're, or they're not going to, it's not going to turn back. They're, they're going to, the Democrats are going to keep it. So, um, and I think as you've heard, I think Mitch McConnell, the things he's saying right now, part of it is to, is to raise money, you know, get people a little bit scared and raise more money. Um, but they're bleeding right now. They're bleeding support. The future looks bleak because they're going to be, the, the demographics are changing. Um, younger people don't like them. <laughs> they really don't like them. They're, they, and so they're in a, they're in a conundrum, right? And, uh, and they are disoriented because they don't, they don't really know what they're doing. They're just kind of trying to stay afloat at this point. They're just trying not to sink and go to the bottom of the ocean completely like the Titanic. They're trying to just stay afloat right now and they will do and say anything. And so it's all just, it's like, it is like juggling. They're just trying to keep things in the air they have. And they know that at, at some point, everything's just going to come tumbling down. Um, so that, so, and, and, you know, Donald, the thing about him is that one of his, he has a ton of failings through and through, right? A ton of things that are awful about him, but one of the biggest um, right and wrong can be very subjective um, because you may think you're doing absolutely the right thing, but in the big scheme of things, it's kind of the wrong thing. I mean, we see that rep Republicans all the time. They think they're doing the right thing, but we would consider it wrong, you know, but with the truth, truth and not truth, there isn't any there's no subjectivity to that. They're trying to make it like there is, but there's not. There's truth and there's not truth. There's what's true and what's not true. And one of Donald's biggest problems when it comes to um, coming up against um, 
spiritual help or having no help. <laughs> and a spirit's never going to go against you. Spirit will just not help you. So things, there are things that have reach, things that can, that have uh, momentum and things that fall, things that flop, things that don't have momentum and kind of, they can go for a little bit because just because you're, you're very, you know, forceful or you push through, but it has no reach because there's no spiritual energy or, or push behind it. So it kind of falls flat. We said it all the time. Okay. But one of Donald's biggest reasons why he will fall flat ultimately is that he lies consistently. He lies all the time and truth is a spiritual principle. And it's one of those things that it's either true or it's not true. So there's not, there's not ambiguity like there is with right and wrong. There can be some objective and subjective right and wrongs um, or subjective right and wrongs. Truth is not that way. Either something's the truth or it's not. And he is always on the side of not. And so truth, so where you see things like Liz Cheney, you see the January 6th committee, there is truth in that. So it's going to have momentum and it's going to have reach. Trump, he can push through. We've seen it. He can push through and he can keep going, but only to a point. Eventually it falls flat because um, that's all it is, is just kind of pushing through. Uh, but it has no, it has no momentum, no reach, right? Ultimately it's going to fall. So that's his biggest, the biggest reason why when it comes between him and Liz Cheney, she will ultimately be the victor in, in kind of pushing the party in a different direction. And she's bound and determined just to take down Trump. She de actually doesn't care at least this, the way it comes across to me is I I will sacrifice my role in, in politics ultimately um, to take down Trump, to get rid of Trump, um, because all is lost if we don't get rid of this guy. All is lost. Not just the Republican Party. All is lost if we don't get rid of this guy ultimately, because he's like a poison. He's like a an insidious poison that's running through the the, the country right now, right? So she will ultimately be the victor. He will, but we're going to see kind of a, a this kind of thing going on for a little bit. Um, but that's how it's going to shake out. She will ultimately be the victor, and it's because of having truth as a in your back pocket constantly. That that is. That's what's going to give her push and momentum. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Um, the other person that keeps coming up for me is Rudy Giuliani. So I feel like something's coming down the pike for him soon. Um, uh, okay, so I'm hearing I'm hearing a possible indictment, um, and the reason I feel like it's possible is because I feel like he may have the opportunity to to play ball in some way and, and kind of. Uh, turn people in or tell what he knows in some ways. So I feel like um, that it's a, um, it's, it's going to be coming his way soon. And he's, it, to me, it feels like he's weakening. Um, and I feel like his, the reason he might be weakening is, is financial. It seems very, uh, for practical reasons to me. Um, and so that's, that's the way I'm, it feels like practical stuff, like, like, like money would be one of those things, or, um, you know, I can't find a good attorney or, you know, things like that. It's like, it's practical stuff reasons why it just feels like he's getting to the point where he's going to cry uncle. It just feels like that. So, um, I just wanted to let you know that he's kind of in my, for whatever reason, kind of in, in my, he just keeps coming up for me a lot. So um, I feel like something's coming down the pike for him. It could be something else that's more personal to him, um, but it, it does feel like he's he's getting to the point where 
um, something's got to give with, with him. And then I also am getting a hit on Pence. Um, there's going to be something coming for Pence. And I feel like it's a, it could be going in and talking to the January 6th committee. Um, but I feel like it's a, it's kind of a, he's been edging this way, you know, this, this kind of like going against Trump and being outspoken about it um, by kind of coming out and saying, you know, stop talking about the FBI and that kind of thing. It feels like there's, there, there's something coming that's going to be that definitive. I am not with Trump. I am in this camp. It, something definitive coming up, even for Pence. Um, and all of, to me, all these people are very disappointing and awful in their own way. <laughs> but I, but I just uh, need to tell you what's coming up for me. And and Pence is coming up for me as kind of a um. And I feel like the advice somebody is giving him advice that you need to make a clean break from this guy. Um, Otherwise you're, you're, you're done. <laughs> you're done. You need to make it clear because this guy's going down. This guy's going down in some spectacular way and you, you have to divorce yourself from him completely. So I feel like that somebody, somebody is giving him that advice. And I feel like he's, he's been hedging a lot, kind of trying to dance on the edge of a sword in a way, um, trying to kind of play both sides, but it's, um, I feel like that those days are coming to a close. Basically he's going to, um, make some kind of move. That's going to definitely put him in a, in another camp other than Trump. So, um, there's to me, there's, this is, a, it's like a slow, a slow roll into better days, but it's, it's very slow. And, um, and we have days where it, it kind of stops and goes back a little bit, but, but it's, it's rolling in a way that, we are ultimately going to see the end of, of Trump, the end of Trumpism. Um, I don't have a timeline. <laughs> I wish I did. But I do think 2022 is going to kind of be a, at least for some, um, I think we may see Mitch McConnell leave, but give some kind of big splash on his way out the door, kind of big, you know, speech or some kind of big, declaration on his way out the door. So that's kind of what I'm feeling right now. Uh, so we may be hearing a little more from him later. Um, and part, I just want to kind of leave you with this because I think part of what is, is also happening is that people are tired. People are really tired. People are tired of you know, I think for at first it was kind of exhilarating to see somebody upsetting the system and that kind of thing, but people are, people are exhausted. They're exhausted for, you know, and now that we have a competent kind of um, careful justice department, um, they're also nervous um, and they're tired of being kind of looking over their shoulder and, and being scared of the Trump base and stuff. They're, they're getting really tired. And so um, in a way that they kind of tired out the Democrats, I feel like Democrats are right now, they're, I, I, they're sort of energized, but in a way that is very um, one foot in front of the other. It's not, they're not under any delusions. Um, they understand the stakes. And I think that my guides, I think they they picked a perfect word, which is they're just kind of disoriented. And so that's the way they're acting. They're spinning in circles, um, trying to figure this out, spinning in circles and trying to figure this out at the same time. And it's not, it's not happening. So um, I hope this gives you a little bit of, a little bit of hope. Um, and at the same time, a little bit of re realistic, you know, this is going to take a while and, uh, but we're coming out of it. We will come out of it and uh, we'll be back to arguing about budgets and all the boring things that politics has to offer. Uh, those days will come, they will come back and then we'll be mad at Liz Cheney again. As, as, the, as the world 
it will be back to the, the way the world should be, um, where we're kind of talking about policies and that kind of stuff rather than the life and death of democracy. So those days will come. They'll come back. Okay. So um, I hope you guys are doing well. Again, I want to thank everybody for your kind, kind um, support and, and prayers and condolences um, for me and my family. It was such a comfort to all of us. And um, I think especially for Cassie too, being um, in the UK right now with all of this happening, I think she is just so grateful. Um, so I'll pass that along for her as well. All right, everybody take care and I will see you um, probably in a, just a few days. I'm going to have a busy week next week and we'll get back to Thursday Night Lives and our uh, Fridays with Debbie and our Mondays with um, Ladies Night. We'll be back Monday. And um, yeah, I hope to see you guys very soon and we'll see you again.